Hello friends, hope you are well. Today we're reviewing the ASUS Chromebook, a very impressive device. The Chromebook is a device like no other. It is carving out its own segment in the market. So what exactly is a Chromebook? Well, put simply, a Chromebook is a laptop, sort of. They look like one, they feel like one, but also act like a tablet. They're a two-in-one mobile device that instead of running Windows 10 or Mac OS or anything particularly known in a desktop space, it is running Google Android on a system called Chromebook OS. Yep, it's like any other OS that you might have to learn. Again, a new system, but it's not that bad. In fact, it's based on the Android experience with the way you download apps, the way you access settings, navigate, and use the system in overall. So what's the catch? Well, let's start with the premise. The operating system is used to be completely internet dependent. There was no embedded apps apart from basic Google Suite. Oh God, I love this hinge and we'll talk about that in a moment. And you had to continually be connected to the internet to make it function, which made it quite difficult to justify device for mobility because you always have to be connected to the internet. Today, however, the operating system has matured. It is functioning more like an Android tablet than ever before. And with Microsoft Office available online anyway, one could make the argument that this device is well placed to be usable. But what has matured is the ability to continue working within the laptop without that connection and the inclusion of the Android App Store. And so if your Chromebook was introduced in or after 2017, then it's guaranteed to run most Android apps. So, who is a Chromebook for? It's for someone who doesn't need the complexity of Windows 10. And yes, it is complex and don't even talk about Linux. And will not be using anything more than a web browser, maybe a word processor, and someone who finds Android apps adequate for the things they need to achieve on a daily basis. I can attest that I don't actually use any apps that are installed at work. It's all web-based. I see the Chromebook being a great device for the older generation, and I would highly recommend it too after spending a few weeks with this one. But the Chromebook has also become a go-to device for high schools and above. The device can easily be controlled by schools and just works out of the box. And it can be really, really well locked down from those pesky, very intelligent kids. It's fast and has less things that can go wrong with it. So that's the Chrome part of the book out of the way. What about ASUS? and this particular model. So ASUS has been making laptops for a decade and their level of quality has certainly been continued into this Chromebook. It's not an offshoot, it's not something random off the main caveat of laptops. And without a doubt made this one in particular feel very premium, where some Chromebooks don't have that premium feel. So generally in the past, Chromebooks were kind of seen as cheap and kind of just for kids really, for students. Now I see this used by professionals. This Chromebook is running an Intel Core i5. Yep, in this small package is a Core i5. Though the missing is a dedicated graphics processing unit, and so it's fully dependent on that Intel Core i5, which performs perfectly. I saw no slowdowns, no stutters. The hardware is powerful enough to run the OS, any Android-based games, and your day-to-day -day web browsing, even high-quality video streaming. But if you want more, there is an i7 version, and all of this is on the 10th generation Intel family. Battery life with the i5 is fantastic. This has had four days of continuous use and then I only need to charge it today as I do this review. And that's very impressive. On the side, it's got a USB-C for charging, fantastic. And it's got a actual earphones jack, fantastic too. It's got a couple of buttons here on and off and it has some speakers. So it has four speakers. We'll talk about that in a moment. It also has a fingerprint reader and it also has on the other side a micro USB and another USB-C port. And of course, it's got a very nice large touchpad. It also has 16 gigs of RAM that keeps your apps running in the background and can quickly reopen them from deep sleep, which works really well with this Android. You know, when you have a very powerful device, Android works really, really well. It has a 14 inch nano display with about 85% screen to body ratio, making it feel extremely premium. Look how dated MacBooks look with that massive bezel on the side. And that's three times the cost of this device. It has those quad speakers for what I would say is the best sound quality in the size. I would say it's, again, even better than a 12 inch MacBook in regards to the microphones and speakers. And it has what we call a little camera. 
yes, you can take video calls on this. This is a test of the webcam and microphone. And actually, as you can see, the webcam to your right, I think, the one with the monitor there, as I lift it, that is a Logitech cam, it's a 1080p, and this is what it looks like compared to the actual webcam on this laptop. And also the voice, the recording, you can see how it sounds with me just sort of talking to it from a fair distance. Let me know what you guys think below. I think it's adequate for what it is, and it'll certainly do in a pinch, and it'll certainly do for some online learning. And as the months go by, we see more and more devices with Wi-Fi 6, and this too, in one, is no exception. Fast and reliable Wi-Fi, as long as you have an appropriate router or modem. You can also use USI compatible stylus to make note taking even easier, and of course you can fold it down like so, and use it like a book. Now, I've been utilizing it mostly like this, and most of the time for reading things, scrolling through, even presenting on a TV. Presenting things like memes to friends. Nonetheless, this is a fantastic way to use the device and don't worry about the back and I'm sure you were going to ask. Yes, once flipped the keyboard is locked and you don't have any way to actually control this. You'll have to flip it back to make it work. Now, speaking of keys, the keyboard has an interesting layout, but it was also very quick to get used to. You can see the actual Windows button is missing. You've got a large control and a very large alt. And you know what? It got a bit confusing at some times, but I got used to it pretty darn quickly. Now, the typing experience was actually really good too compared to other low profile keyboards. I would say it's certainly up there in my top favorite keyboards. It's nice and clicky, it's light to click. In fact, I wrote this whole script on this laptop. Now, that's usually my test. It's the way I would test a device to see if it's actually good, especially a laptop or a keyboard. The touchpad is surprisingly good too. I would suggest slowing the movement down a bit because the settings that it comes with were a bit too high and that was fresh installed too. And it felt really accurate after that, but when it was too high, it felt like I was flying around. And I'm surprised how well a mouse works in the Android environment. And I'm really impressed guys, Asus and Google, well done. That's a really good implementation of a mouse pad. It is also very lightweight. That's why I'm sort of flicking around. It's very strong. It's probably due to the magnesium alloy chassis, which then in turn keeps it nice and cool to the touch. There are some vents on the sides to get the air out, but nonetheless, it feels great. And it is certainly not a fingerprint magnet. And it also has a fingerprint scanner like I mentioned, and that adds a level of security that schools only dream about. And it's really nice to see in a device like this that isn't actually like particularly expensive. We'll talk about that in a moment. The touchscreen is a pleasure to use. It's solid and has little to no flex. The sensitivity is impressive and the OS caters to most gestures I tried, but because the experience is closer to a laptop than a tablet, gestures just aren't really required. Just swipe up to go back. It kind of feels like an Apple tablet. And I was happily tapping away like a mouse pointer, really. That's the way I was using it. Now, the big selling point here is the web browser. It's a full web browser, not that weird mobile experience. And that's what sets it apart from standard tablets. So all extensions work, and like Google extensions and all that. And your experience is as it should be if you had a proper laptop. That's right, even if it's a two-in-one laptop. So what's it like to use every day? Well, I found it to be more of a tablet than a laptop. As mentioned, I browse a lot of websites, I watch a lot of videos, and I managed a bunch of my YouTube videos, for example. I wrote this script, and I was happily tapping away on it. I wasn't playing games, I played some sort of pop-up games, kind of like tap here, tap here, and that was cool. But it's, you know, it's a almost an Android tablet that's very powerful and very quick, and the resolution of the screen is really spot on. It is 1080p, and it works really, really well. The limitations are, as mentioned earlier, the App Store and somewhat your internet connection, but from the first Chromebooks, this is much more polished and seamless. I'd recommend this as a device for non-tech savvy in your family, kids who get up to mischief, and office workers who don't need to use applications when they just email, web browse, and the occasional Excel spreadsheet, which is available online anyway, so this would work quite well. The build quality is great. As you can see, I am flicking it around. It's really solid, and you know what? I would like to give special emphasis on the hinges. I was feeling a little bit uneasy when I first got it about the way it would fold, but the hinges held up so well. I'm just impressed. There is no play in them, there's no give, and they close and they hold. You know, they hold that edge really, really well at all angles, and that was just really impressive to see in a device. 
this size and at this price. Now hard drive space is a bit of redundant on a device like this, but I would say go a bit more than the lowest available 64 gigs. The Play Store can still provide you with some power apps and I believe it will suffice for the average user. And at the starting point of 700, the SUSE design lineup is a good place to start with Chromebooks. So I highly recommend you guys checking this one out. Now the Core i5 version starts at 899. I would recommend it over a similarly priced laptop because most of the time these laptops are underpowered for Windows 10 anyway, and people use them for exactly what this Chromebook is made for, web browsing, video, and word processing. So why would you buy a big bulky laptop when you can get a Chromebook? This is my suggestion. Don't do that. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this review and it hope it helped you actually decide if a Chromebook is right for you. This is one of those things you gotta look out for a few things and see what's out there before you decide on spending your hard-earned money. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like this video if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks and bye.